So then, we are back with the more understandings from the Renewed Covenant, from the Aramaic English translation of the word. This translation is from the original documents of the Hebrews of old, from the prophets of Israel. We find ourselves then during the time of restoration, as then we begin to search the scripture as per then the design of the Creator. Those were done via layers of understanding of the prophetic. So then, obviously, we must understand the Torah as then a divided piece of art of writing from heaven. And then we select it properly areas of prophecy in distinct times of the earth, however related with the completion of those prophecies. At the moment, we can then remove the Megillah of Yerushiahu pertaining then to the restoration. Then you find the 61st chapter of Yerushiahu. Then you remove the Megillah itself from the entire sect of the writings. Then the 12th chapter of Daniel. Then you remove the Megillah from the 12th chapter of Daniel. In the 12th chapter there are many multi-layers. You have to then make sure you understand the line of understanding of this prophetic timeline. Then Zechariah the 12th chapter, parts of it. Also Ezekiel the 38th chapter speaks of it. So at this time of the end, there is not much going on in terms of prophecy. In fact, we are very at the end of the closing of this age. If you begin to understand from the time of the prophecies and then what they were trying to say to the people, the prophets, they were simply indicating people must return to the instructions, speaking of the Hebraic people, and then obviously the Gentiles who submit themselves and then study the Holy Scripture. So then they would be part of then the autumn feast. The autumn feast is the vengeance. So then the Shilishim, when they began to teach the people and then they would cluster, obviously they were doing what the Messiah said, go around the world form holy cities. Because you people have learned from the time of your salvation from slavery, then you are going to teach the Gentiles how to come out of their slaveries. And the principle never changed. But then they would be multiplied by many cities as representatives of Jerusalem. So then when you read Hebrews, and you understand, the writings of the Hebrews were for the Hebrews. Very profound, is it not? When you read the section where then the Shaliak Shaul states of the city always wanting the city to come, he was speaking then the very perfect understanding of the city of the desert, of the first service, and then the second service. So he was preparing his people then, make sure you understand the principle of this transitional time. Always wanting that city to come, he was then making a reference of those people that were clustering together, yet they were forming a city in this earth based upon Jerusalem's model, the city of the desert. However, always wanting the city to come from heaven after the earth is refurbished. Read the scripture. How do you think the earth is going to be destroyed? You find this precisely in the Revelation. And the Sodoms and then those people involved with many kinds of Sodomite activity were found in the cities of the plain. How were they destroyed? By a shower of sulfur. If you go over there and take a trip, you'll find those pieces of sulfur over there yet. You take them from the sand, you lit up a match, comes out a blue frame. Then they melts metal. Extremely hot, more than 90% pure sulfur. That's how the earth is going to be then cleansed. 
Then what you hear of Shimon when he was speaking then, at the end of time, then the elements would be burned completely. So then you understand what those areas of the past were given to us as a sample for our instruction. That we should not go after those situations and sins of the past because they had their just rewards. Destruction. So then what he was trying to say, he was pointing people and preparing them for the vengeance to come. This was the whole point. So then his people were saved then from Egypt. They were slaves. They received the first service. Then they trained for more than a thousand years. Then they would go out forming holy cities around the world. And their aim, their task, was then pointing the people then further in the future for the completion of the second part of the Torah, the Autumn Feast. While they were preparing themselves, there were then people qualified from heaven with special functions. They would help them to get through while they are then dealing with this perverse and miserable and condemned planet. And some people, they quote John 3.16, Oh, oh he so loved the world because he sent his only son to die for the world. And whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Bunch of junk. You don't know how to read it. First you are tied up with a name, Yohanan. He was then the disciple, the beloved disciple. Shaliak. Love has nothing to do with it. encouragement the people to remain loyal to the Torah and remaining then on a path of Yahweh as they go through the ages meaning then the centuries he does not love this world this world is condemned he simply has prepared his people then to direct Try to understand. They are acting as prophets. They are pointing people back to the instructions. But while then they are learning baby steps on how to do it, then they report at the gates. Then they come up with their problems. They have this problem, this other problem, this other problem, then do this, that, and the other. Then you turn around and resume your life and you report as much as you can. Because they are preparing the world for the vengeance to come. Try to understand the concept. Autumn feast, the second portion of the Torah. So far the spring feast was completed. The second part is the vengeance. So these junky Bibles, throw them away. This junk. There is so much a person has to do with it in order to make sure then it becomes a worthy copy. There are so many adjustments, it's not worth it. You have to, in a literal sense, throw it away and buy yourself then an Aramaic copy. Then you begin to understand. Now I had my own copy of this scandalized scripture. Begin to read, then begin to make sure, begin to compare with the Aramaic. Boy, it does, doesn't fit, doesn't fit, doesn't fit. This part fits, this other, there is more parts that doesn't fit than fit. Ended up throwing it away. Because it is junk. And then get yourself then the Aramaic copy, but then your notes, what you think is relevant, then you compare with the Aramaic. But then you begin to understand the Torah, you know, the Hebrew, big Hebrew. During the Shabbat, they read and they present to the people around and then they lay it down on the podium and they begin to read. That's the Torah. That's the instructions. That very writing that they are reading must be then cut into pieces. 
Not because a person is destroying, but because a person then is making sure the layering understanding then is in order. Because that's how the Hebrews of old used to do. They would then gather those thoughts, those understandings, those layers, they would group them together based then of the seasons and the time related with the prophecy. And those were treasured for centuries and centuries and centuries. Then when the prophecy was near, then the priests would simply read the area then where we are at. That's how it was done. Very simple. So when you observe the Hebraic people then reading the holy understandings, those are then sewn together, but they shouldn't. They should be apart as per layers of the prophecy. And what they should be reading at the moment would be then what Yahweh spoke through Yerushiahu the 61st chapter. And they should be teaching the entire world what Yerushiahu spoke words from Yahweh regarding then the time of rebuilding. So then the priest of Israel would be taking those areas, those layers, precisely as then the prophets were speaking and recorded. And then the Gentiles on the Shabbat, then they would be taught. They don't read anymore, for instance, Deuteronomy, when it's a time of rebuilding. No, they have to read those areas related with rebuilding. For instance, Ezekiel, then the 38th chapter, there is a section over there that shows you. But then when the priest is involved, he then explains the layer that came from long ago. Then they begin to understand a level of thinking based upon the prophecies and the specific timing. But when you have the Torah then sewn up together, it doesn't make sense. They have to separate the thoughts and then those layers, holy layers, and then teach the people as such. It is yet the Holy Torah. No question about it. But then the people are taught as the old ways of the Hebraic thinking and Hebraic teaching. The Messiah was in the temple. He was given a portion, only a portion of Yerushiahu. The part related then with the 61st chapter. They didn't have the entire writing of Yerushiahu, only a portion of it, because it was then the prophecy was explained in layers. During this time, during this season, this is taking place in the future, so then they would record it and would put it away. When it was the time then, they would remind themselves of the words of Yahweh, oh, that's the time for the prophecy spoken of. They would remove those Megillas and begin to read. That's how we should prepare ourselves during this event. So then the nations around them, they were subjected to those prophecies. That's why they were the most important nation on the planet. Because those prophecies were bound then the lives of the Gentiles. But then if you go to Israel these days, you hear those priests not speaking of those layers. Don't they are reading the Torah, but doesn't relate with the time and the season. You must understand, Yahweh of Israel has the side of a time of restoration. And he has provided each nation with a specific trade nation of this end of time so they can relate with and then do trade with. It is there in Yerushiahu. And then Yahanan, the Shaliak, he was making references. As it was explained before, the Messiah only spoke 10% of the entire ministerial time of himself teaching the Word, teaching the Torah only 10%. 
490 days you have only 10% worth of material. Had a whole lot more many Megillas you can never imagine. So what was the situation then? The Messiah, he did have the understanding of those Megillas of old. He knew by memory. Of course he did. But he had also to give the people steps of formation. And he began then to teach from the time of old. As he then was coming near the completion of the spring feast, he was explaining layer by layer. Then he was doing this. He explained what those were. When he was in the temple reading, he was reading the precise understanding of a specific layer. He was not in the temple, and at the first, then God was then in charge of the heavens, and then first day came and he created this and that and the other. That's not what he read. The people should know this. They were interested in times and then seasons. Then Yahweh had sent himself, the Messiah, to set the prisoners at liberty. Prisoners of ignorance. Those who were trying to understand then the Torah, the times and the seasons, and they couldn't. They were bound. But then he expounded the situation and he explained them. They were enlightened. And they were, they were revigorated then to be obedient and remain in the path of Yahweh as it was before. That's what the prophets of old did. And the whole nation would line up themselves. So then when the world was then subjected to the prophecies, then they would come to Jerusalem for guidance. Because they were subjected, each nation of the world, they were subjected to those holy prophecies. Becoming a whole lot more clearer for us Gentiles because we didn't have a clue of these. We are bound by ridiculous numbers and names and then we put pages and then our minds become screwed up because we don't understand any Hebraic thinking. If we would visit then with a Rabbi very exercised in the word of Yahweh as per the Habis of old from the prophets of old, the way they taught the people, then the Torah would be many sections of Megillas. There they would be absolutely separated by thinking, by thoughts, and then by layers. Perfectly. This time they can teach. This time was then when we were in Egypt. This is what came out of it writing-wise. Then later, the first service was established. These are then the Megillas involved with it. And then comes Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, the most important in terms of Gentile learning. This is what the Messiah did for us. 23rd chapter speaks of the feasts. From the first verse to the 21st verse, then comes the spring feast. He came then to do the spring feast, make sure the spring feast was completed. Then he brought the first anointing for the second service. Then the second service started. The cities. So when you hear the city is not Jerusalem. It is the city of the desert. The city of God. You have to take your mind away from Jerusalem when you are understanding holy prophecies. It's not the city of Jerusalem, it is the city in a desert. Because the city in a desert then was the purest time where then the nation was at unison with the Creator. Then later they were given the promised land and then there was a transfer of the tabernacle onto the promised land and they continued. Thus the city of God. Then became plural. Later became plural. They would go around the world. They would form holy cities. As representatives of the city. So when you hear then. And you read the 61st chapter. Then you hear. And then your cities would be rebuilt. And the city. 
He's not speaking of Jerusalem. But then you have to link up also the layer of understanding from Ezekiel, Zechariah, Daniel. Each of those gives you then parts of the whole understanding. Yerushiahu, mostly spiritual. And you have to understand the city of God in the desert. Daniel, however, gives you then step-by-step -step formation of then the kingdoms of the earth. Secular kingdoms. He was a statesperson. So then the layer from the top, the layer below. And then you have more of those prophets also speaking from the layer above and the layer below. What do you think came on later? The first thousand years his people would be in charge. It was the first layer. Then they were giving directives to the nations. Then came the other layer where then Satan thought he could do himself. Thus then the city was destroyed, the tomb was destroyed, and it was the time of the deceit. Then you have a mixture of what they thought was heaven plus Gentile ruling. Didn't work. Ended in 6009. Then we are back to the truth. Where do we find the truth? Yeshua 61st chapter in understanding not of the 61st, but then the layer of restoration. So when you read the restoration, then comes the priest with the Megillah of Yeshua. Restoration, 61st. But they don't relate at 61st. They relate as the restoration season. So when you hear then the prophecy related with the restoration, then parts of the world, they are very fierce. Obviously the nation of Congo beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. And then it speaks tabernacled among those fierce people. What do you think that is? Yahweh has decided to take the worst part in the world of wars and rumors of war and disasters. And from there he's going to tabernacle. Because it is related with the rebuilding. No liar and scoundrel would ever use his words in that area. If they find it's a lie, they cut to the pieces. You don't lie over there. If you are speaking of God, then teach God. Yahweh, the Creator. But those should be given by the priests as they begin to teach the people, depending on the time and season, then he comes, then we are in this time, time of restoration. So you should read then Yeshiahu 61st, but then you don't understand Yeshiahu 61st. You understand as restoration. Then he comes with what you think then is Daniel the 12, Zechariah the 12, and then Ezekiel the 38th, Yeshiahu the 61st. Those are not numbers and names. Those are restoration. Then you understand time of restoration. What is the relation with then the time of the Gentiles? Then you take the parts of the Megillah when the Messiah spent time with the Samaritans. Two days with the Samaritans. Then you understand the first thousand his people was in charge. The second thousand was then Satan in charge. Didn't work. Then people returned to the truth. However, what is the significance of then the Gentiles in the rulership? 2,000 years. Then you understand what Daniel was speaking of. Nations would try to then come together and try to adhere to each other in what they thought was heaven, what they thought was the best in rulership and didn't work. So the deceit is out of it but remain the rulership of the Gentiles. Where do you find? Daniel. And then where you find the rest of it, the guidance for the land, end of the uh, trades of the earth, you find in China. Where do you find the third parts of the ships? Asia. What is the most prominent country in Asia? It's China. What do you think then the word is going to be? 
And then when it's so obvious, what you have to do is only retract a bit from the time where you read it, and then, 20 years before, what do you think you should do? You begin to do trade with China on their ways of doing then trade via computer, because that's what's taking place. Put your heads to work. China is going to come up with a computerized system on how to do trade via computer worldwide. And the reason why nations of any kind would do trade with her is because people from their homes having a simple computer can do investments while they are engaging in rebuilding. What type of era we are living in? Rebuilding. What do you think is taking place? So that's why you have the dynamic person of Daniel speaks of then political leadership. At the end, no trying to adhere to each other because it won't work. And it didn't. Because he was the prophet, he was speaking as a statesperson. Don't be concerned with the end of times in terms of Gentiles because the whole understanding of Daniel is related with the Gentile rulership. That's why when you read the restoration, you have to read from heaven's viewpoint, the cities being returning, plus then the Gentiles ruling. Give them both directives, so then when you read Yerushiah, you understand. Even then the heathen would observe with their own eyes. And they would, then they would be praising Yahweh, because he's so great. And then his people would boast in Yahweh because, oh boy, our God is truly Yahweh, the true creator. And they, they would return to their old ways as the prophets used to teach, as their own ancient people of old would read the scripture through layers, 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 layers. And then Gentiles from many countries would go to Jerusalem because, Rabbi, what's going on? We are in this portion of the time. Thus, when you hear the section in the Renewed Covenant related with the rebuilding time, and you make a reference to the previous covenant, you find that ten Gentiles would get a hold of the garment of the Hebraic person and say, Rabbi, Rabbi, teach us because you know the truth. Where are we at? We are there, this portion of it, time of restoration. So you read then the portions of it. But then Yahweh gets the credit for being so great because he has provided Gentiles and also his own people and both of them working together during the time of rebuilding. And then any other factor related with is the same type of thinking. That's why Shaul the Shaliak renew your minds with the Torah, because then you begin to set your mind layered. That's why when you read then Hebrews, you find then he's comparing the first service to the second service, first service to the second service, first service to the second service. What was the aim of the first service? Indicating the coming of the Messiah. That's why they were then rehearsing every year the same thing. In other words, every year they would do the spring feast, autumn feast, spring feast, autumn feast, spring feast, autumn feast. Because in a certain year he would come. And he did, and he completed half of it. What is the aim then of the second service? The completion of the autumn feast. Please stay tuned, much more coming up.